morning everyone, welcome back to another video. Slept in this morning, which is nice. We uh, bailed late last night, made probably 200 bales total. Um, had a small hiccup there with a phone in a bale, but uh, we got that all sorted. I came to the farm this morning and my plan was, oh, I'll just go, I don't know, pump another 10 loads out to the field or something of liquid manure. But then as I was pulling up to the farm, I saw my sister Miriam, she was driving the Bueller Versatile out and uh, she wanted to go Harrow's. So I guess dad disconnected it from the pump so I can't pump liquid manure right now. But uh, yeah, she's out in the field, Harrow packing again. We'll see if we can hop in the track with her. Otherwise we'll just put the drone in the air. But uh, this is that really rough field that we bought last year. Uh, it was past year a couple years ago. Me and dad were talking about cultivating it to really smooth it out because it does need quite a bit of work. But we figured cultivating it is just gonna loose, loosen up the ground too much. And then as a result of that, it's gonna dry out. We're gonna lose all of our valuable moisture and we just can't afford to do that right now. So Miriam's gonna harrow this. I think she's gonna harrow it twice. There is always a risk of blowing out here in Saskatchewan with the lighter soils that we have. This is definitely a field that we would consider just sand. And uh, the reason why I think we're gonna be able to get away with harrow packing it twice is because of how much manure we've put on this in the last year. And the previous guys that were renting this blew the straw over the field as well with the combine. So uh, there's quite a bit of trash here and I don't think we need to worry too much about the sand blowing away in the wind. You stole my tractor! Can I come along for a bit? So what was so important that you had to do this morning where you stole this tractor from me? That's a arrow. <laughs> this quarter twice. Two times. Yeah. I guess it is kind of time sensitive because we're going to plant rye here again and that's probably going to happen in a couple weeks so got to get it done. Did you actually need this tractor? Well, I was planning on pumping liquid manure, but not anymore. Well, last time the GPS cut out halfway, so then there was probably a quarter of that field where it was just free-handed. Wow, that's, that's impressive. You can definitely see that I did not have the GPS at all. There's still farmers out here that are not using GPS auto steer. Yeah. You I can still use the light bar on top, or was that no, not that, working? No, that was out too. Oh, okay. It was fully out. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. I feel so bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> so she's just harrowing away. I think this is one of the most popular implements like every farm has one of these the flexi coil harrow packer it's just got the harrows in the front which kind of rips up the top layer of your field and then these packer rollers pack everything down and it does a pretty good job of smoothing the field out you can see the before and after here and if you hit it twice and sometimes at an angle that really will smooth your field out. So we're just driving through the field right now, picking up Miriam for lunch. Hopefully you guys can see the truck bouncing around and then you'll kind of get an idea for how rough this field is. Well, the air conditioning quit working in my house, so I called a furnace HVAC place. They came out and fixed it this afternoon. You take that for granted uh, really quickly when you have it, but uh, and you miss it when it's gone. So thankfully that got fixed and uh, Biggest reason I think my air conditioning went out, and that's what the guy said, I have never changed the air filter in my um, furnace system or, or air ventilation system in my house. So he said probably once a month is, is good to change the filter. And uh, well, I guess I'm in January, it'll be two years that I'm living in this house. So uh, 18 months, I guess. 
no filter change, so that'll do it. <laughs> 300 bucks later. Um, I also didn't clean out the unit on the outside of the house either, so just a reminder for everyone, if you want to save some money, uh, change your filters and, and keep that unit clean outside of your house. So unfortunately he didn't have a spare filter, so tonight when I head out to the field to go and bale straw, I'll head into the city first and see if I can get some air filters for my HVAC system in the house. Anyway, I'm heading to the farm right now and I'm gonna grab our swather with the haybine header and we're gonna go and cut those weed patches down in the pea fields. This is a common spot you find yourself in as a farmer. You're in the cab, you turn the ignition on and you're like, oh man, I didn't check the oil. Get out, check the oil, man. To check the oil on this Macdon swather is kinda tedious. It's kinda underneath the hood and you gotta reach up in there. We're good. Of course you could lift the hood up and make it easy on yourself, but why would you do that? So we made it out to the field and we got a bunch of these patches of lamb's quarters that grew in the peas. There's still some pea pods left here. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but they're turning black, which is kind of weird. So your crop definitely can spoil out in the field if you leave it too long. The grain itself still looks excellent, but uh, yeah, there is some piece still in the patch. The reason why we don't combine it is just because it's not worth it. It's too risky to plug the combine. It never feeds through nicely. A lot of grain gets kicked over because of it. And then uh, it's just too easy to come out here instead with the hay vine, drop this stuff, let it dry for two weeks. And then you get some bales of hay. I've seen some other farms around here do it as well. So I'm just gonna drop these corners. This field has, I think four or five of these patches not more than an acre and then uh, the next field we're going to go to after this probably two or three acres total just became completely overgrown with these weeds of course we try to spray for them in the summer keep these things out of the field but sometimes it's just not possible also if you send this stuff through the combine and there's some mature weeds it will blow millions of seeds all over your field and then the problem only gets worse year over year and hopefully the idea with the swather is that you're not blowing the seeds over the field. Instead, you're bailing them up and taking them off, and maybe the weed problem gets less worse over the next couple of years if you keep doing that. Awesome, that was field number one. It only took us like 20 minutes to drive around the entire thing. It's only a hundred acre field, so that's good. That means the most of this field was still good standing peas. Anyway, on to the next one. I was just driving to the next field and I see two turkey vultures on a pile of rubble out in somebody's field. So I'm gonna get the drone up in the air and try and show you guys these things. They're like the weirdest looking birds that are here in Saskatchewan. In my opinion, they belong somewhere in Africa and they should probably not be out here. Just weird looking buggers. Yeah, kind of weird. Um, it's just the bald head it looks like a, yeah, a turkey's head, but they're vultures. And they look like those vultures, I think, from The Lion King, maybe, or I don't know what movie I'm thinking of when I watched when I was a kid, but one of them, they were definitely villains or something, you know? They were.
right on. Well, we're done with that. I'm gonna head back to the yard. Uh, it took a little longer than I thought it was going to. It took me like two and a half hours to clean these two fields up, but uh, at least it's done now and that stuff can start drying. I was just walking from the shed to the barn and I was looking at the liquid manure spreader and I looked in the back here and something just didn't look right. That broke off. So you can see on the one up there, it's kind of like a cross brace and this one just snapped clean off. So that is pretty sketchy. I think I'm really lucky to have seen that. The amount of weight on this tank when it's full is insane. So uh, everything down here needs to be working properly. I'll have to make a note of that and make sure it gets fixed before we start hauling with this thing again. Sketchy stuff. Well, I told you guys they took the Versatile off the pump here and uh, they just left the pump in the pit. I don't know if I would have done that. It's pretty sketchy. <laughs> he, Dad put a chain on it to that pipe so if it did want to fall back. But uh, yeah, I don't think I would have done that. Yeah. Oh well, it'll be easier to hook up next time, that's for sure. I'll tell Dad we should just leave that pump in there from now on. It's so much work to take it in and out. You could do that if it was stainless steel, but uh, this steel would just rust within a year probably. Can't do that. We're driving past the field right now that we're bailing. That's where we're gonna go bailing again tonight. And uh, I'm just gonna head to the city, pick up that air filter for my air conditioning, get some Tim Hortons and then we'll head back out here and uh, take out another big chunk of this field. There is a lot of straw on the ground there. A lot of acres to cover tonight. I don't think we're gonna finish it because we have like a half section and then half of a quarter. So like 60% of a, a section is on the ground there. We'll see how it goes. Of course, it'd be nice to get done as much as we possibly can. And uh, that just means there's less to do tomorrow night. Hey, can I get a? Yeah, hey, can I get a large double double, please, with an espresso shot in it? Large double with espresso shot. Sure. Yeah, and then a turkey bacon club, please. Large regular. Large. Sure. So large turkey bacon club, large regular with espresso shot. What else for you? Um, that's everything. You come to window, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Made it out to the field, just started the tractor. Dad was here fueling it up with Fedder, and uh, they also pitchforked out a bale. The bale we cut yet last night to uh, find Brent's phone. They're just shaking it out a little bit so that we can bale them because it's gonna take an hour to get out here with the loader to shake them out. So hop in a truck, grab a couple pitchforks, and shake them out like that. So there was two in the last field we did, and hopefully those are the last broken bales we make. Still got quite a bit of net wrap on this roll here. And there's a spare one in the back, I believe. No, there's not. I should probably fill that up. Just getting started here. We got 402 bales on the counter. That's what we started out with. Two inches bale height and the net wrap starts to go automatically around the bale beeps at you and then you can kick it out sorry for the shaky video well we're done for the night now pretty uneventful evening of bale in there uh, which is actually a good thing that means nothing went wrong so Went smooth tonight, that's for sure. We covered a ton of acres. I'd say we're seven eighths done this uh, section of land here. This is a incredibly big field. I was just thinking while I was bailing, this single field is literally one quarter of the size of our entire land base for our farm, which is just crazy. 
Uh, big field, takes a long time to bail. We'll easily finish it tomorrow night um, if we're able to bail smoothly again. Anyway, I'm gonna head home, go to bed. It's time, time for bed. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you in the next one.